I am fluent in chicken. Buck, 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 buck. I only give my chickens about two handfuls of feed a day at most um, because I let them free range. And that has been working really, really well. I've lost a few chickens to predators. Um, like out here in the field, we found uh, uh, maybe one or two kill sites basically where there were just a pile of feathers. But for the most part, we've had really, really good luck. I've got Maggie out here, my, my pup that protects the, the flock for the most part. She doesn't let anything, any intruders come on the property, which is good. Um, and we've got cats that patrol the barn and kill vermin and rodents and things like that. So for the most part, we've had pretty good luck free ranging them. And that cuts down on all of, all of the feed costs. I mean, literally a bucket of feed for chickens lasts me forever. It lasts a really, really long time. They get everything that they need um, from just from just going up in the woods and scratching around behind us here, digging for grubs and worms and seeds, and they come down here out to the field. I got kind of a mess going on here right now, but they come out to the field, they dig up worms, they eat the seeds, the grass, the, all the stuff that they need, and and they lay eggs very regular as long as the weather's warm. When it gets cold, they sort of shut it down a little bit, but and then you got to increase the feed. Um, but, but for the most part, I've had really, really good luck with that and I want to continue doing that. But however, with all of the, not rumors, the, the, um, bird flu going around the H1N1 and all of that, it, not that I'm concerned that my birds are really, really isolated, but I'm, I'm not that I'm concerned that they're going to get that for the most part, but it does make me more aware of the fact that they're more vulnerable and replacing them because I've only got about 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think we've got 10 uh, chickens, one rooster uh, at the moment and replacing them is probably not gonna happen. You can't buy chicks right now. You can't, you can't do that. They've, they've shut that down because of the bird flu. So um, with those things in mind, uh, I'm gonna have to reconsider my, my methods of, of keeping these chickens. Do I wanna continue to free range them, which is I think the healthiest way to do it? but they're more vulnerable to predators and irreplaceable? Or should I coop them up, build them a run? I don't know yet. Um, you could leave them in the comments what you think, what has worked for you, if you've actually done it. Don't, don't leave comments on theories on videos that you've seen of other people doing things. If you've actually raised chickens and had success doing it, let me know. There's a lot of really concerning information going on out there right now. Maybe it's just because I'm in the you know, preparedness circles that I hear about it and um, and I'm aware of these things and most people maybe are not that they completely oblivious to it. But, you know, a lot of the stuff, for example, you know, the, the, the money that Bill Gates is pumping into research, researching, developing strains of influenza that will bridge the gap from birds to humans and be, you know, you, why, why put all of this money, this effort into researching this and creating these viruses now i know what the other side's going to say they're going to say well you know it's so we can be better prepared so if, if this should occur naturally we can you know fend it off and already have these vaccines ready to go and available if that should happen and you know i am forever skeptical and i will always be the one that believes whatever's going around last. I don't I don't trust anything that those people say. I don't trust what the government says. I don't trust what the, the news says. I don't believe anything. I don't believe doctors for the most part. <laughs> I have, I, have I, uh, I am forever the skeptic and I, I think I'll always will be and I'm um, I really need to research and investigate and touch things, see things for myself before I, I buy into them. And there's just so many, it's too suspicious and it's too coincidental, all of this outbreak, virus, vaccine, uh, mandates, and government push to con control. It's always about control and it's always about power and money. And when there's a lot of money to be made, a lot of power to be had, I, I trust the information even less. I don't believe anything the government says. I don't believe anything our president says. <laughs> I don't believe anything that you say, but um, I, I don't know. I, I, all, I, all I know is that I can do what I can do and I can control what I can control and I'm, I can't worry too much about all of the stuff that's going on in the world. Is it a, yeah, yeah it is.
That's what, yeah, exactly. But is it a scary thing? Absolutely. Um, is there, is there a, is, is it scary that there might be a, you know, a bird flu epidemic spreading across the world that depletes the chicken population and eggs and causes food shortages and, and then that may jump the gap to humans and have up to a 50% kill rate. I mean, yeah, I mean, that is, that's some scary stuff and that would affect all of our families in a tremendous, tremendously awful, horrible way. And, but what can I really do about it? What could I do about it? I can, I can control my f small little flock here that's getting into their feed right now and getting a little more greedy than they need to be. Um, I can, um, I can try to grow as much food and produce as much meat as I can around here. So far, I've just kind of been, you know, practicing, right? I haven't been, I haven't bumped this up to a huge scale that will produce all the food that my family needs. That's a, that's, that's a commitment. That is taking, that is taking what you do just on the side after work kind of thing. Um, and that's changing that in, in going full time into farm mode, basically, and, and stopping all the other stuff that you do and, and committing to raising your food. It takes a really big garden. It takes a lot of chickens a lot of rabbits to feed a family of five. So do I need to amp that up? Do I need to step that up? Do I need to put less priority on making money and more priority on making food? Because that's something I can control for the most part. A lot of, a lot of unknowns in there as well, but, but that's something at least I can actively do to ensure my family's normal way of life a bit of a mess at the moment and just this you know avian flu bird flu h5n1 whatever it is um it's just kind of reminded me motivated me to keep my chickens in as clean of a space as possible and by i think by free ranging them that is i'm doing that they're out in the woods they're out in the field and it's the cleanest best environment for them to be in i think that's the way um nature kind of intended them to be just like my, my children, I try to free range my children as much as possible, kick them outside. <laughs> I'm gonna fill up their, their water. I'm gonna add some apple cider vinegar to it. I've had some really, really good luck with that. We've had some chicken ailments in the past. And when we've put apple cider vinegar, and this goes for my rabbits too, when they've, whenever they've had anything, it really doesn't matter what it is. Um, we've put apple cider vinegar in their water and it has done a really, really good job of cleaning whatever it is up. Did they get over it just naturally? Did the apple cider vinegar do anything? I don't know. I can't prove that. I'm no scientist. I didn't do any side-by-side -side comparative analysis, case studies, any of that. But I do think that it does help. Apple cider vinegar cures everything. It's a miracle. I don't know. So I'm gonna put it in their water. As I was using my shovel to clean out some of the, the coop here, I noticed signs of violence right there. And then I looked up here and something apparently has gotten one of my chickens. That's at least what it looks like to me. So I need to do another head count on my chickens and that's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, you've got to, even in the coop, you know, where you think that they're safe, maybe they're not. And with a limited supply of chickens and if they're gonna be at a, basically in a position where you're never gonna be able to get, no, no, I shouldn't say never, where you can't currently get new chickens You've got to be really cautious with them and take extra care to keep them safe. And I've got to figure out how critters are getting in here. So we also have rabbits, not a lot right now. We only have six rabbits at the moment, but as you guys know, rabbits reproduce like rabbits. And we could easily go from six to 50 <laughs> over a course of a summer, no problem at all. And a buddy of mine recently asked me, because he knew that I had rabbits and chickens, he said, you know, if you had to pick one, which which one would be the best, the best source of protein and 
what's the easiest animal, best animal to have? And it's by far chickens. Because one, they give you eggs, right? You can always get eggs. Our chickens, I only have like, a, I only have 10 chickens, but they give us more eggs than we eat. We've got so many. I've got a couple dozen eggs sitting on the counter right now that haven't been eaten yet. So I literally have to start eating more eggs just to keep up with it, <laughs> just to keep up with the production. If I had to pick one, chickens are by far the easiest to take care of, the most productive, and black australorps, australorps, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Though we've had the most luck with those, they're the black ones. Um, and they have this really pretty like iridescent greenish tint to them when the sun hits them and they really pump out the eggs i think they hold the world record three it's like 364 eggs in a year a chicken laid i think they might have taken off christmas or something but this is what i was talking about having a plethora of eggs this is probably from a week or so from our chickens all right guys tell me what you think about this video tell me what you th your thoughts are on the h5n1 if i'm even saying that correctly i'm no scientist Tell me what you're doing to prepare for this. Are there gonna be huge food shortages? Is this gonna affect the world supply of food? I don't know. Is it something that I need to worry about? No, it's definitely not something you should worry about. Is it something you should prepare for? Absolutely. Stockpiling food, very good idea. Having a flock of chickens for yourself, very good idea. If you've got the space and the time to take care of them. Anyway, make sure you hit that thumbs up, leave me a comment, and we'll see you on the next one.